watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. They say that opportunity only knocks once, but temptation seems to pound on my door forever. Even opening up and letting it in doesn't seem to make it go away. More temptations come along and the beating goes on and on. Those temptations that cause me most problems are those that pull me away from being my best self. So I can relate to the Swiss woman who was served dinner on a domestic American flight. She opened up her dessert and delicious looking piece of chocolate cake and immediately sprinkled a generous layer of salt and pepper over it. A shocked flight attendant exclaimed, Oh, it's not necessary to do that. But it is, the woman replied, smiling. It keeps me from eating it. She found a way to drive temptation away from her doorstep, at least for a while. The most persistent temptations in my life are distractions that keep me from doing what is in my best interest. I forego some much-needed exercise because I just don't feel like it today. Have you ever felt like that? You may want to quit that reading group, that difficult class or those music, music lessons. It's easy to become distracted and get discouraged. Or maybe we say we just can't find the time to spend with those closest to us, such as our family. We may want to do these things, it's just that sometimes we need a nudge. The scriptures tell us that we all face temptations. 1 Corinthians 10.13 says, No temptation has overtaken you, but such as is common to men. Perhaps this provides a little encouragement as we often feel that the world is covering in on us alone and that others are immune to temptations. We are told that Christ was also tempted, St. Paul said, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in all things as we are, yet without sin. So where do these temptations come from? First of all, they do not come from God, although He does allow them. St. James says in 1.13, For God cannot be tempted by evil, and He Himself does not tempt anyone. Temptation originates in us. We are tempted when we are carried away and enticed by our own lust. We allow ourselves to think certain thoughts, allow ourselves to go places we should not go and make decisions based on our lusts that lead us into temptation. How then do we resist temptations? First of all, we must return to the example of Jesus being tempted in the wilderness by Satan. In the book of Matthew chapter 4 it says, each of Satan's temptations were met with the same answer. It is written, followed by scripture. If the Son of God used the Word of God so effectively and the temptations which we now works because after three failed efforts, the devil left him. How much more do we need to use it to resist our own temptations? There is no other weapon against temptation except the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Colossians 3.2 says, Set your mind on the things above, not on the things that are on the earth. If our minds are filled with the latest TV shows, music, and all the rest the culture has to offer, we will be bombarded with messages and images that inevitably lead to sinful lusts. But if our minds are filled with the majesty and the holiness of God, 
the love and compassion of Christ and the brilliance of both reflected in his perfect word, we will find that our interest in lusts of the world diminish and disappear. But without the word's influence in our minds, we are open to anything Satan wants to throw at us. So let us pray together. My Lord Jesus Christ, you showed us how to resist evil by your pure words. Help me, Lord, to imprint your words in my heart to resist every temptation that comes my way.